In today's video, we're going to be looking at factorising, but a very specific kind, which is the difference of two squares. And this is when you meet a quadratic expression with no middle term. To show you what I'm talking about, it would look something like this, as opposed to something like this. So notice the difference, we have no middle term with this first example. So when you look at solving the difference between two squares, the two factors are symmetric, one with a positive sign and one with a negative. So if we look at this more generally, it looks something like this. So one of the a's is positive and one of the a's is negative. However, as always, it's much easier if we look at a few examples. So let's start by factorising x squared minus 144. So as always, we have our two brackets, we put an x at the beginning, and then we need to ask ourselves what number is multiplied by itself to get to 144, and that is obviously 12, because 12 times 12 is 144. And then if we look at our general rule, we can see here we need one of the signs to be positive, one of them needs to be negative, so let's just pop that in. One is positive, one is negative, we already know that the number is 12, and let's check that our answer is correct by using the FOIL method to multiply out the brackets. So remember, FOIL stands for first. So we multiply together the first values in the brackets, so that becomes x squared. Outside, so we multiply the outside values, which is x and 12. So that's minus 12x. The inside values, which is 12 times x is plus 12x and the last values in the brackets. So we multiply plus 12 by minus 12, so that becomes minus 144. These two values cancel out, so our final value is x squared minus 144, which matches with the original question, which was to factorize x squared minus 144. So we know therefore that that answer is correct. So let's look at three further examples. So we're factorizing x squared minus one, so let's start our question as always with two brackets and two x values we know we need a positive value and a negative value so what numbers multiply together to make one well that's obviously one so we just put in one and you can check over here using foil so you have x squared minus x plus x minus one which equals x squared minus one yes it matches so our answer is correct let's do the same with x squared minus 81 here are x values Let's have a positive and a negative. What numbers multiply together to make 81? Well, that's 9. So 9 times 9 is 81. Pop those in. Check your answer. So it becomes x squared minus 9x plus 9x minus 81. x squared minus 81. Yes, it's definitely right. And then with our last example, we have a y value. So we have two brackets. We're going to have y at the beginning, a plus and a minus. What number is multiplied by itself to reach 121? Well, that's 11. So let's work it out and make sure it's correct again. So it's y squared minus 11y plus 11y minus 121 equals y squared minus 121. Yes, it's correct. So remember, these answers here that I'm underlining are your answers. These ones over here are just proving that you're correct. We're getting slightly trickier now because we have a coefficient in front of the x squared or y squared term. So let's start by factorising, by looking at our terms and working out what factor we can bring out to the front. So what is common in both 10x squared and minus 360? Well, they're both factors of 10. So we're going to bring that 10 outside the bracket and work out what we need to multiply to get 10x squared. Well, that's obviously x squared. What do we need to multiply 10 by to get minus 360? Well, that would be minus 36. And now this term inside the brackets, we can do our normal finding the difference between two squares. So bring that 10 out, have two brackets. We know that the x goes at the front of the brackets. We know we need a plus and a minus. So what number multiplied by itself equals 36? Well, that is 6. So that is your final answer. Looking at e, 4y squared minus 100, what is the common factor for both terms? Well, it is. 4. So what do we multiply 4 by to get 4y squared? It's just y squared. What do we multiply 4 by to get minus 100? That's minus 25. 
So we can see we have a difference of two squares again. So let's do our two brackets, a y at the front of the bracket, a plus and a minus. What number multiplied by itself equals 25? Well, that is 5. So that's our final answer. Our last example is 3x squared minus 27. So the common factor here is 3. What do we multiply 3 by to get 3x squared? That's x squared. What do we multiply 3 by to get minus 27? That's minus 9. Let's do the difference of two squares. So pop your x in at the beginning. What number do you multiply by itself to make 9? That is 3. And that is your final answer. Right, I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to like and sub. And please tell your friends and teachers about my channel. Bye.